Over a third of Americans want Obama impeached. That's even one in five Democrats favor impeaching president. Uh, this is 33% uh, said they want Obama impeached. 57% of Republicans. 45% of the people say that Obama has sought to expand the power of the presidency too far. Maybe that's why they want to get him out of there. And of course... What will they do about it? We've seen a lot of Republicans pushing back in the last couple of weeks saying, oh, we don't want to do impeachment. We've seen op-ed pieces. We've seen spokesmen for the Republican Party saying this is a losing strategy. We, want, we don't want to do this. They need to do it, I believe, because it's the right thing to do. If you don't push back, you're essentially saying you agree with what he's done. You essentially say it's okay for a president to ignore the law, to ignore Congress, to ignore Supreme Court decisions and do whatever it is that they wish. It's wrong to not oppose this kind of activity. If you lose, you lose, but you have to have the backbone to stand up. That's what we were talking about with uh, Paul Ryan when he went before the FEC and begged them for an exemption to do what politicians have essentially been doing, and that is using books that they write to raise money. And of course, Hillary Clinton didn't go to them and ask for an exemption. Uh, now, not that she would really care what the law is or what the regulations are, but we have certain rights and one of those rights is free speech, and that's especially about political speech. It's not just there about artistic freedom. Certainly, that is part of free speech, but the First Amendment is there primarily to protect political speech. And if the Federal Elections Commission is going to impinge upon that and take part of that and turn it into a privilege granted by them and prescribed by them. They came back and said, well, you can't write more than two sentences on your website about it. And they put some other restrictions on there. The FEC chairman, who is Republican, was very upset about that, said that they've established a regulatory precedent here, yet he voted for it. They slapped down Paul Ryan, yet he asked permission from them to exercise his First Amendment rights. So when the Republicans say they don't want to go to the bad and they don't want to uh, vote to impeach or try to impeach Obama because they can't win it. They just don't have the backbone to stand up for principle, as all I believe that's behind this. The American people are getting tired of this. I'm very tired of it. I'm sure you are if you're listening to this program. Uh, let's go to uh, Paul in Canada. Paul, you've got some solutions, you said, on your, on your notes here. Go ahead, Paul. Hello, man. Hey, what's your solution? Hey, I'm glad, glad, to, glad to get through finally. I'm a long-time listener. First time caller, actually not first time caller, I tried to get through before, but I'm uh, glad to get through to you. Um, I just want to, I got, I got a few things I wrote down, I'm just going to shoot through them real quick, and whatever one you want to touch on or remember, that's great, you can, you can give me a reply. Go for uh, it. Uh, here's the first one, Alex is always talking about dead kids. That, uh, I just want to say that that probably makes a lot of people uncomfortable, and it, it turns a few people off. I'm, uh, it, it's not so much me. But there's a, a, probably a good percentage of people that as soon as he starts talking uh, too blatantly about uh, it's just it's not so much uh, roasting black kids on the White House lawn. Okay, we all understand the analogy behind that. But when he says uh, uh, grinding up at meat cleavers and he starts going on about rape and all that stuff, that that probably makes a lot of people really uncomfortable. And whether he's trying to get sensational to prove a big message or not, it automatically turns the people off. So you don't you don't think we should speak out against uh, abortion? No, absolutely speak out against it, but there's, there's, there's ways to word it that's not so, I mean, no, no, I'm not. Yeah, it's very offensive, you know, when, when anti-abortion protesters go places and show pictures of what they do to the children during the process of abortion, people get very offended by that. They should be offended by about it, about it. Anybody with a moral sense should be offended by that. From the water table, to our soils, to the atmosphere itself, our world is becoming more and more toxic each and every day. But it's not just the air outside that's toxic. Indoor air has been shown to have two to five times higher concentrations of pollutants than even outdoor air. And most Americans spend 90% of their time inside using toxic chemicals within their homes. There are more than 42 million smokers in the United States. Well over a thousand types of mold and mildew linked to numerous conditions. And don't forget the fact that six million Americans live with pets they're allergic to as well. When I began to research these statistics, it was clear to me it was time to start cleansing my lungs in order to combat the toxic environment that we cannot escape but that we can fight back against. Made with organic and wild cultivated herbs and manufactured in the USA, the new InfoWars Life Lung Cleanse is here in a convenient spray bottle that can be brought with you throughout any toxic environment. Now available exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139.
Hey, now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com forward slash show. We had Paul from Canada. He's offering some solutions. Uh, Paul, I want to get back to you. One of the things that you were saying was you thought that it turned people off a lot when Alex talks about babies being fed through a meat grinder. And yet, you know, so many times we see, for instance, Obama's drone strikes. We're, we're told how the military goes in and surgically strikes into these areas, and it makes it sound like it's such a clean thing. And yet, as we're seeing in Gaza, there are real human consequences. People are blown to pieces. Children are blown to pieces. And there are real consequences for abortion. We have children who are ripped to pieces. And those pictures are so graphic that they are censored for the most part. They're censored in any media. They're censored even in most demonstrations. They won't allow you to show that because it is offensive. We should be offended by that. And we should try to wake people up with that. And that's what Alex is trying to do. He's trying to appeal to people's emotional compass to try to get them to understand what's really going on here. It is not some antiseptic little surgical thing that's going on here any more than these drone strikes are. But I, I said I'd give you a chance to uh, give us your other solutions. Go ahead. Thanks, David. I appreciate it. And I, I have to say, I, I do agree with you guys, and I don't want to take up too much time on the subject, but I do agree with you guys. I, just, I think he sometimes goes over a little bit too much, and I, I agree that I agree or disagree. And, uh, I'm still 100% in support with you guys. Uh, number two, um, one of the big things that woke me up when listening to you guys is every time you, you used to say, uh, they a pharmaceutical, we only put the FV40 virus into the vaccines back in 19, whatever it was. If, if I was wrong about that, they'd sue me. That was a huge, huge thing when he said, if I'm wrong about that, I would get sued. But if you guys just mention that line, anytime it pops in your head, mm -hmm. you'll have new listeners. Because I was, I was arguing with my brother last, yesterday at work about that same exact thing. And I said, if he was wrong about this, he'd be sued for defamation automatically. Let me interject something there, too. And that is, it's a known fact, especially with cats, that it's a very frequent phenomenon that they will develop a tumor and cancer at the side of their vaccines. Now, that should tell us something. Because our animals have a much faster metabolism. They have a, a shorter lifespan than we do. They are essentially the canaries in the coal mine. When we see our pets developing cancer from vaccines, that ought to tell us something. But go ahead. I'll let you finish your other points. I just had to interject that. <laughs> go ahead. No, no, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. I, I really agree. Um, just, just to just mention, we'd be sued more. If, 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 yes. if I was wrong about the stack, I'd get sued. Just boom, right there. It's automatic default. They have to believe. Like, I mean, they don't have to believe it. They're going to know it, it, can't be, it, it can't be a lie. You can't just come up in the air and make up absolute false lies. Uh, you'd be sued all day. Anyways, That's point number three. There's a new weird Al Yankovic uh, video out there. I don't know if you guys have seen it, <laughs> but it's the most blatant Illuminati New World Order stuff there is. On, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's called foil. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's two takes on it. I don't know. There's two takes. He lumps in together a bunch of real stuff, like the border crisis, and he lumps in together... Uh, uh, other stuff that's real, like the NSA spying, with with absolutely ridiculous stuff, aliens cutting your head off and and getting shot. I, I, there's, there's a, he lumps it in with some crazy stuff, like far past David Ike, with some real stuff, and then he, he says oh, there's a big conspiracy and gets drawn off. Now there's two takes on it. I'd love to know what you guys think about it. You can talk, talk about it after though. Uh, but um, it's, there's a, there's Sorry, I'm, I'm well, it's kind of a, you could kind of take it one of two ways, you know, I mean, at, at first he's doing something looks like he's uh, making fun of uh, Alex or, you know, the, the truth or movement or whatever. And but then at the very end, they, they do actually haul him off. So, you know, it's like, are you paranoid if it if they really are watching you? Are you paranoid if they really are pulling you away? So, yeah, you could take that one of two ways. And I think he intentionally left it ambiguous because I don't think he wants to go down on one side or the other. He's just an entertainer. But go ahead. Did you have any other point you want to make? Uh, yeah, well, number four, MP3 sometimes on your site, they, it drives me nuts because I'm, I'm a prison player member, and mm -hmm. sometimes I, like, they, I, I download daily, and I need to listen, I don't need to listen, but I listen to it at work while I'm working, so I need the MP3, and sometimes it's not there, so if you guys, whoever's doing that, like, All if right. you're going to leave one We'll pass that along. Thank you for being a subscriber. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for your call. So I want to go over a little bit of news. Now, it came out yesterday on Infowars.com that Joe Biden... Went to the NAACP earlier this week, as well as to other places. And, of course, Joe Biden and Eric Holder's Justice Department. This administration says that it is racist if you want to fill in the blank. No, in this case, it's ask for voter ID. Now, of course, the government is all about 
checking our ID everywhere. They're coming up to people and asking them for ID on the street. They stop people 100 miles inside from the border and want to know if you're an American citizen. Show me your ID. Show me your identity papers, please. Just like in Nazi Germany, everything, they want voter ID. They're looking at us all the time, trying to get biometric identification. They're always looking at our faces, scanning for faces, doing everything. If you want to walk into a bar, and buy a drink, unless you're as old as me or John McCain, they're gonna ask you for identification. You have to have identification to drive a car everywhere, but not for voter ID, according to Joe Biden and other people. He says that any attempt to do this is an attempt to restrict voting rights. He says we're trying to uh, repress minority voting and they're masquerading it as an attempt to end corruption. He goes on to say that when he made this speech at the NAACP, he said, well, there, there's been no cases of this reported. Let me tell you something. Not everybody reports this when it happens. I have secondhand knowledge of this happening back in North Carolina. A friend of my brother-in-law's told him in this last election, we went into, it was actually it was in uh, 2012, when he went in to vote, he was told that he had already voted. And so had his deceased mother. Because you see, in North Carolina, you only need to give them a name and address. You could go into the phone book and pick that up. And you could vote the phone book because you've got a lot of time to do it. So let me tell you something. Anybody that's using this as a beard, they've got a different agenda. They're bringing in a lot of illegal aliens. They're even going to go into the countries now. We see that Obama is going to start flying children in from Honduras, uh, so they don't have to make the journey themselves. We don't want them, you know, the, these young children, we're told that elementary school children now are making this 1,500-mile uh, journey that takes about 35 hours if you do it by car. But, of course, they're too young to drive a car, so I'm sure they can just walk it themselves, right? No, I don't think that's happening. I think they are being accompanied by someone. I think they're using these children as anchors to bring the rest of the family in. But he wants those people to be brought in. He wants them to be able to use voter ID so they have non-citizens voting in the elections because he knows that they're going to support him. Of course, they can always give them citizenship as well, and that's the next thing down the pike. But even if nobody had done this, why would we allow the potential for fraud to exist? Now, of course, you even have to have voter ID if you're going to get Obamacare. That's right. But the GAO, the Government Accountability Office, which is a nonpartisan organization, they went out and did a sting operation on people who were getting their Obamacare subsidies. They did 11, 18 attempts. And in 11 of those 18 attempts, they found that they were able to get through. So I guess Obamacare, even though it asks for your ID, it's not really racist because they're not really checking your ID, right? But it is racist, they tell us, if it's being done in these other states. And there's a lot of states who are now putting in regulations to require voter ID. Washington Post poll last year showed, and this is according to the National Review, that 65% of blacks and 64% of Latinos supported voter ID. And also the constitutionality of it is not in question either. The Supreme Court upheld the fact that Indiana had a voter ID law. It's really just going into states like North Carolina or Texas because those are former states that were part of the Confederacy. They want to try to push this racist agenda. They don't want people having voter IDs or photo IDs to, to vote. They don't want to establish the legitimacy of the voters anywhere. But of course, they can do it there by raising the racist card. So we see this happening over and over again. Of course, the Eric Holder Justice Department doesn't really care about what the Constitution says. It doesn't care about the Supreme Court's decisions. Immediately, and neither do the Democrats, immediately after this decision with Hobby Lobby, where they got the religious exemption recognized by the Supreme Court, immediately after that, Democrats in the Senate as well as in Congress put together a bill in the House of Representatives and in the Senate to essentially write another law that would take away that exemption for close, privately held businesses, even if they are incorporated. But of course, they don't get it that the Supreme Court said the Constitution says that you can't do that. So the Constitution trumps their legislation. So even if they were to go back and do another one, of course, that is just grandstanding to their base. But even if they were to go back and pass yet another law, 
saying that you had to buy or provide certain types of insurance if that conflicted with somebody's religious uh, freedoms, then it rightfully should be struck down yet again by the Supreme Court. Let's go back to your calls. Uh, let's go to Mark in California. Mark, what's on your mind? Hi, thanks for taking my call. And thanks for your hard work as well. Thank you. Um, I just uh, was really wondering, why no one's ever mentioned uh, regarding the uh, lost uh, drives uh, for the IRS uh, that we can just go to the NSA for all that information. Oh, yeah. I've heard, I've heard some people mention that. Actually, there was a story in the news today. I was just going through it as you were talking. Um, Tale of the tapes. This is from Fox News. They say that uh, the IRS head is now confirming that investigators have found backup tapes of Lois Lerner's emails. Um, actually, they're they're putting them on tape. I, that, <laughs> I wrote this down. And I said, are they really still using tape? I mean, maybe they're even going back and using uh, paper tape. You know, like the old PDP eights uh, from Deck. I, I can't believe that they're putting this stuff on tape. But of course, as we pointed out. The chances of hers and several other people's disk drives failing simultaneously was astronomically small, especially when you multiply the probability of a chance. Typically, hard disk drives have a mean time between failure of about five years. So when you multiply that out by all these people that supposedly failed at exactly the same time, there's not a chance that that happened. But of course, as Alex has pointed out, as we've pointed out, they weren't just keeping them on their hard drives. They are backing them up. You've got companies that were bragging about the fact they provided backup for the IRS. So whether or not they're still putting this out on, on a tape, I don't know. I'm, I'm surprised that anybody is backing stuff up on tape. Maybe they are. Maybe they've got enough stuff that they can do it. It take a long time to uh, back up very much information on tape, however. But yeah, what, what, would, what do you think is uh, going on? You, th <laughs> you think they've got the uh, IRS you know, emails, uh, don't you? You know, we're, we're, I think that what's going on in an upside down world. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I think what, what really offends me, though, seriously, is, is the fact that the IRS, which all always has the, comes to you like every other agency now is, is doing that, presuming that you are guilty and then you have to go to them and prove that you're innocent. And you have to do that by keeping these records. And yet they say they don't have to keep the records, even though they have their company policy that says that they have to keep the records for a number of years and that they have to treat electronic records the same way that they do paper records. So in spite of all of that, they're given a pass. They don't have to. And, and basically, if you go in and, and you, we've had a lot of tax protesters who have uh, said that they don't want to. We had, there was one case a number of years ago. I remember it was an airline pilot. And he did not want to sign his tax return because essentially you're incriminating yourself. You're opening up yourself to a lot of different things when you say everything in my tax uh, statement is correct. That opens you up to a lot of persecution. Well, he had a very simple tax return. He was going to establish that they couldn't make you violate the Fifth Amendment of self-incrimination. And he just simply was a, an airline pilot with no investments, no business, nothing that would complicate it. It was simply a W-2. He refused to sign it. They prosecuted him. They sent him to jail because you have juries who will rubber stamp whatever the government tells them to do. But he was trying to establish his Fifth Amendment protections. And so here you have the Lois Lerner uh, go before Congress and claim the fifth and didn't even do it the right way. They say that they don't have to keep records, but you have to keep records. They exempt themselves from all of the laws that we have. And of course, if they destroyed records and we treated them the same way they treat us, then they would be going to jail because it would be a presumption of criminal actions. And of course, they would not be innocent until proven guilty. Thank you so much, Mark in California. Let's go to uh, George in Connecticut. George. Hi there. I had a, um, a suggestion that you should probably get somebody on there that knows the law really well, and maybe we can find out a way to have like form, some sort of form process that we uh, do in each state and sue our representatives when they break the law, whether they're fluoriding us or, or breaking the law, and basically go after them for embezzlement because every time they basically – supposedly act in our interest and really are against our interest, and usually the, the, the general public, not just our individual interests I'm talking about, then why should we be able to sue them for the salary they're, they're collecting? Uh, that's like embezzlement. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's not, you know, what will happen in, in most cases, the, the courts, I believe, will say you don't have standing. We've seen this happen over and over again, even with lawsuits against the TSA. They pretty 
much have a way to control the legal system. I think the best way that you can go after them in the legal system is to educate people about the purposes of juries. I keep repeating this. I mentioned this in the last hour. We had a divided powers by intention in this in this government when they set it up. They didn't just divide powers between the branches of the centralized federal government. They also divided power between the federal government, between the states, and between the people. Now, the people don't just have an election box, of course. It's not just the ballot box, as we famously heard. It's also the cartridge box, the Second Amendment, but it is also the jury box. That's one of the ways that you can stop injustices from being done to your fellow man. That's the way we roll back and void these laws. Before I go back to the calls, I just wanted to point out this article that was on New American today. ATF says guns are the problem. And in this article, what he points out is that there's essentially been a change in strategy in terms of shutting down the Second Amendment from the ATF. He points out that in George Bush's last year, 2008, there were just over 5,000 gun violation cases. Under Obama in 2013, there was a decline. I'm sorry, under Bush, it was 6,700. Under Obama, it was just over 5,000. It was a decline of 25%. So he says, it looks like even though they're talking about how they want to get guns under control, that they really aren't doing those kind of prosecutions, but it's not that simple. He points out that what they're doing now is they're actually taking a different strategy. They're actually going to an obscure part of the 1934 National Firearms Act that allows the agency to go after violations that they perceive to be in the making, shipping, buying, and selling of firearms. So that's really where they're focusing on that. And they point out that these are very arcane, difficult rules to follow. So they like to entrap people with these types of regulations. But the key thing out of this article that I thought was interesting was the attitude of the ATF supervisor that was reported in USA Today. They quoted him by saying, do you want the police to solve crimes or do you want them to go out and prevent crimes that haven't occurred yet? Well, I think I want them to prevent, to solve crimes that have happened. I don't want them arresting people for things they haven't done. I mean, that goes way beyond the innocent until proven guilty idea. Okay, remember that? That antiquated idea that goes back to the Magna Carta, you know, that's been part of English common law for centuries, for millennia. You know, the idea that you have a jury trial, that you're innocent until proven guilty. How about we don't arrest people until there's actually even a crime that they're suspected of committing? But see, that's the attitude of the ATF. See, just having a gun makes you a criminal. Well, not exactly true. And they point out, uh, they say, are we supposed to wait for him to commit a murder before we target him as a bad guy? Are we going to sit back and say, well, this guy doesn't have a bad record. Okay, so, you know, throw him back out there. Let him kill somebody. Then when he gets a bad record, then we're going to put him in jail. See, that's Minority Report pre-crime, but that's the attitude of our government. They believe that we're all criminals. They treat us like criminals because they believe we're all criminals. And they're willing to shut people down before they have committed a crime. They manufacture evidence. They manufacture charges, trying to get people to not go through a jury trial even. So they, they put a whole bunch of bogus charges on people when they arrest them, try to intimidate them and say, oh, we'll pull off some of these bogus charges if you'll cop a plea to this lesser thing. Just as we mentioned at the beginning of the program, over and over again, we see that when people stand up to the government as individuals, the government will back off from these things that they try to put on us under color of law, whether that's somebody having their hog production shut down, whether it's the Bundys, whoever it is, if you stand up and you say, you're not going to do that to us, or you stand up to them, as in the case of the Bundy Ranch, especially, they said, we're not going to stand by while you wrestle or throw to the ground, rather, uh, a, a, an elderly lady from behind, somebody who's recovering from cancer. We're not going to stand by while you do that type of thing here. Over and over again, we report that kind of brutality, but I was heartened to see people in that community, when they saw it happening in their community, they stood up and said, that's enough. We're not going to take that. All it takes is for you to stand up, for you to push back against this. They will, right now, what they'll do is give you a pass. They'll say, well, okay, well, then you can do it, but we're not going to let anybody else raise those kind of pigs. But we have to stand up and push them in court. Let's go to your calls right now. Let's go to... Uh, John in California. John. Hello, John. 
Okay, sorry. I think he's dropped off here. Let's go to uh, Jim in Connecticut. Jim. Hey, David. How are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? Not bad, thank you. Um, I'm with uh, We Are Change Connecticut out in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And what I think what we really need to start doing is everybody, everybody and their mother needs to start calling their local radio shows. Like I, for, for instance, call my local AM radio. And I bring up topics that they're not going to bring up on the radio show. Um, we need to, everybody needs to start confronting their politicians in an ambush form. Um, we just need everybody, everybody needs to get out there and start acting like a journalist. That's really what we're going to have to start doing for the information to get out there. Absolutely. Because. That's a kind of guerrilla marketing, isn't it? To, to interject topics that the media doesn't want to talk about because they've got some very specific things that they want to talk about and a lot of things that they aren't going to go anywhere near. We were just talking to a caller in the last segment, and he was saying that he thought one of the best ways that we could affect change is to, one of the things he does is to call up talk radio and interject topics that they're not talking about, uh, just standard talk radio, things that typically not be on uh, mainstream radio. That's what we're trying to do here. You know, one of the ways that uh, I really found InfoWars was when Drudge started picking up a lot of TSA stories, because that really, really outraged me. And the only people covering it it was Alex Jones in InfoWars. He's been doing this for 19 years, and we're really starting to have an effect now, and it's because of your help. You've built this. You've made it possible for Alex to reinvest the money in terms of hiring reporters that we can send to locations, in terms of building studios, to put this out on multiple platforms. It's your support that makes that happen. And one of the things that Alex decided a long time ago was that he was going to offer products that were going to help you fight the assaults on your health primarily. We also have other products that can help you to advertise uh, the issues, uh, t-shirts, belt buckles, that sort of thing. But primarily, it's been focusing on things to help you take control of your health, of your life, so that you can fight back against this. And so we've got some great specials up right now at InfoWarsLife.com. We've got, through the end of the month, we've got a fluoride shield special. That's a collating detox. It's 25% off. If you get it with X2, Survival Shield X2, it is going to be a 30% discount off of that. Of course, you can find that at InfoWarsLife.com. We've also got Silver Bullet that is back in stock. We were out of that for about uh, two and a half months, but at the rate that it's going, we're going to be out of that in probably about a week, and it's a difficult thing to produce, so it could take us about another month to get supplies in. We still have some available there right now. It's nineteen ninety five, so great price on that, and of course, Super Male and Female Vitality. We've been getting rave reviews on that. All of that stuff you can find at InfoWarsLife.com. The number is 888-253-3139. That's 888-253-3139. Well, let's go back to your calls. Let's go to uh, Jay in North Carolina. Jay, what's on your mind? Hey, David, you're a great addition to the show. Um, well, thank you. You keep talking about, you keep talking about jury uh, nullification. We've created a website to educate the American people on their power and authority under the Bill of Rights and the Constitution. It's uh, nationallibertyalliance.org. Nationallibertyalliance.org. Okay, good. Yep, and we, we found a case where uh, it's the uh, U.S. versus Williams where Scalia goes on a rant on the power and authority of the people's jury. And even in the uh, uh, Prince versus Mack case uh, uh, for Sheriff Mack, mm -hmm. uh, Scalia says, the people are the sovereigns, the sovereigns are the kings, the government cannot tell the people what to do. And we're trying to take back the juries right now by educating people and making a, a jury list of educated uh, constitutionally minded people. Well, that's real important. I know that they've got something that I believe is going to be on the ballot in North Carolina. Maybe I, I'm not in North Carolina now. I haven't been there for a while, but I believe they've got something on the ballot where people would essentially surrender their rights to a jury trial and make that okay unless it was something like a capital offense or something. Do you know about that uh, possible ballot access issue? That possible no, ballot? I, no, yeah. I don't know anything about that. I'm a, I'm a truck driver, so I'm hardly ever back in North Carolina. Oh, so okay. All right. A lot of things goes on I don't know about, but we're trying to, um, we're trying to reconstitute the common law grand jury, and we're, we're actually over half of the states right now have signed on to this, 
in uh, in New York State, they've got almost all of the judges, including Polente, under indictment right now because they're we're demanding access to our courtrooms. Well, that's because great. This is the people's. This is the people's court. That's our brick and mortar building. So that's everybody good. should go to this website. It's nationallibertyalliance.org. Good. There's two. There's uh, two eight-hour Constitution courses. There's common law courses. There's the Federalist Papers, the Anti-Federalist paper, Papers. There's there's hundreds of, of Supreme Court case ruling, all telling us our power and authority under the Constitution. Well, you know, it really is an education war. It's an information war. People have to understand first. You know, we, we get criticized all the time saying, oh, you're, you're trying to just scare people, not offer them any solutions. People have to understand what is actually happening to us, number one. Number two, they have to understand what their power is. That's what you're talking about with your website. They have to understand what they can do and the powers that they have essentially given over that uh, don't need to be given over. The fact that you can lawfully, for instance, record the police in public. You have the right to do that. That's been affirmed over and over again in court cases. And of course, you don't have to physically get in combat with these people. If they're going to insist on it, just sue them in court. Of course, the problem with that is it's not going to be paid out of the officer's individual account. It's going to come out of the uh, taxpayers. It's going to do that. But there's many things that we can do. And I think we have to take that approach. We have to act at the local level. Thank Liberty Act locally, I think, is what we need to do. Thank you, Jay, for your efforts in uh, North Carolina. Let's go to Ronnie in Texas. Ronnie. Thank you, sir. Yes, I uh, was calling uh, basically uh, what the Connecticut caller was uh, talking about, uh, controversial subjects which are uh, banned, basically. And uh, one in particular that's important to me is in uh, Eighty eighty percent plus of Iowans, you know, conserved Iowans are, are at least in favor of medicinal marijuana, and that's something that is obviously I can't seem to get on the air hardly ever about it. And the other thing that um, more personally I wanted to uh, mention was that uh, I, I again I, I don't mean to seem paranoid, but I I had a speeding ticket, and uh, I, uh, the prime I went jumped through the hoops and went and talked to the prosecutor, and uh, they told me it was dismissed. Then I got uh, in the mail a notice that, no, well, evidently the judge changed her mind, and she's not <laughs> going to dismiss it. And I was wondering if that, what's going on here? Uh, well, I can't give you legal advice. I, I, I'm not a lawyer. I, I don't know. I, I know here in Texas that you can actually opt for a jury trial uh, if you get a traffic violation. It's actually a little box that you can check on there. I don't think they have that in many states. They certainly don't make that as an obvious uh, choice. They, so if you, if you have uh, the ability to do that, because in so many cases they set up these courts like traffic court. So many of them are just kangaroo courts that they set up. We see that these bureaucracies like the EPA, for example, or the IRS, they, they set up their own courts, they write their own regulations, which is essentially writing their law. So they have their own legal system that they just admit as they want without representation from us or any input from us. Then they have their own court system where you go before judges, not before a jury. They even have their own police force that's doing that. It's just like this case where uh, the, the fellow up in Montana with the eight acres and he built a pond on his property and then the EPA decided they were going to extend their jurisdiction. Previously, they had only asserted jurisdiction over waters that were crossing borders that were public waters. Now they were going to go after this guy who had water that he'd just collected in this hole that he had dug out. It was on his own private property. It wasn't going onto his property from somewhere else. It wasn't going off of his property to somewhere else. But they came after him with $80,000 a day fines. And then just a week or so ago, they came out and said, we're going to now seize that money directly out of your account, just as if we were the IRS. So that's the way they creep with this authority, and it's 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 getting, it's it's getting truly amazing. So I, I can't really help you with your uh, traffic thing there, but um, uh, it is it is amazing, and we do have to stand up for our day in court. And one of the ways that you do that is demanding that you get a day in court. Many times you're not going to have a lawyer who is going to put his law license on the line by standing up and talking about jury nullification. I covered while I was here, uh, for one of the first uh, couple of months that I was here, there was a guy called the New Jersey Weed Man. And he represented himself because he couldn't get a, a lawyer that was going to invoke 
jury nullification. And he actually had the New Jersey Constitution that said that jurors had a right to judge the law, not just the facts of the case. The first judge said, you can't show that to them, but he had already done it. And he got seven out of the five, out of the 12 jurors to acquit him. The prosecutor came after him a second time. The second time, he got a judge that allowed him to leave that sign up. And then he was acquitted 12 to nothing. At that point, they can't come after you again. Typically, they can only do like three strikes at you, but they can't come after you after you've gotten a complete acquittal, 12 to nothing. And that's what he got, but he had to do it himself. Other people aren't going to do it for you. The lawyers, in most cases, do not want to go up against a judge and fight the judges when the judges are telling you, you have to do what I say. Let's go to, uh, thank you, Ronnie in Texas. Let's go to Kathy in Michigan. Kathy. Is Kathy gone? Let's go no, I'm to. Here. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Kathy. Oh, hi, hi. I uh, love the show. First time caller. Yeah, I was just um, wondering how far you think uh, this is going to go with the illegals coming in before the government decides to um, get off their duffs and do something. Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I mean, I don't see any sign that anybody is really getting ready to do anything. I mean, uh -huh. the most that anyone has done is Rick Perry, who said that he's going to activate the National Guard. But of course, from what I saw, maybe I'm wrong, but the reports that I saw said they weren't actually going to deploy them. They were, they were getting them ready. Uh, they weren't not going to deploy them for like another 30 days, another 30 days. Do they take that long to deploy the National Guard if there's a hurricane? I don't think so. So I don't know what they're going to do when they go down there. They've been, uh, he's been questioned like, do they have arrest authority? Uh, he wouldn't say that they did, but now I just saw an article saying that someone has speculated that they may be given arrest authority. So I don't know, but that's the most that we've seen anyone do with that. I don't think that the Republicans want to do anything. It's just like the, uh, the impeachment of Obama. They don't want to stand up and take the hit for doing this. And they're concerned, I think, that the fix is in, that they're going to be perceived as being racist if they try to stop immigration that's illegal, if they try to stop the takedown of this country. And of course, I don't know, what I would like to see happen is I would like to see the incentives removed. And of course, removing the incentives means removing the entitlement. Uh, welfare state. Now, you can start by removing the in incentive and the entitlements of people who come here as illegal aliens, people who uh, get citizenship given to them because they're under a certain age, the DREAM Act, those types of entitlements. You can at least remove those. Open borders, open immigration, as much as I don't want to see the government erecting a Berlin Wall at the border, I know that we cannot have open immigration and an expanded welfare state at the same time. That is going to destroy the country that was designed to destroy the country. That was actually a strategy put forward back in the 1960s. We mentioned this over and over again. Cloward and Piven, look it up. They've been wargaming this for a long time. Finally, they've got somebody who's going to do it. And I, I don't know, Kathy, I mean... All I've heard from Republicans is like, well, seal the border and then we'll have immigration reform. Well, immigration reform doesn't mean amnesty. It means <laughs> do something to enforce the laws that we currently have. Send the people back. Give them a meal and send them on their way if they're children. What do you think should be done? Yeah, um, well, basically, I agree with you that, you know, it, they should, you know to me, it, open up the border is like Niagara Falls. At least you can shut the falls off. Well, it, it brings up the problem, of course, you know, there, there is the issue of compassion. And I think a lot of Christians have a misguided compassion to this. We see Nancy Pelosi going to the border two days before she supported forcing people to pay for abortions through Obamacare. Two days before that, she's standing with Catholic priests, Catholic nuns, talking about how these children have the light of God in them. She does that on a Saturday. Then on Monday, she says... Uh, what about the religious freedoms of the people who want to have abortions? I mean, it's like it's some kind of a religious right to her. And then she says this last week, she talks about uh, these children are like baby Jesus. So they're confusing a lot of people on the compassion side of this. But the reality of it is when she said that she w wished she could take all of them home with her, there's a reason that even she can't do that. It's because we don't have the resources to provide welfare for everyone on the planet any more than you could allow people to move into your home and just say feed me you can't do that 
We all have compassion. We want to help people. One of the things that I believe that we could do to help people is to stop the war on drugs. That's one of the things that is making it so violent in these countries. And, of course, the IMF has gone in there and exploited those places for decades. Going back to Robert McNamara, they were accused of rent-seeking because the IMF stopped financing right in the wake of uh, World War II. They, were, they came in to finance infrastructure improvements, roads and bridges and that sort of thing. Then under Robert McNamara, they went in and started extending loans for these countries to... to then turn over into the welfare entitlement programs. And that just made them go farther and farther into debt, just as it's doing to us. And so all the things that we've seen them do to collapse Central and South America and other countries around the world, the bankers are doing that to us now. That's what's really behind this. It isn't practical for us to be able to extend welfare to everyone. And yet we see Obama saying he's going to go down to Honduras and actually fly the kids in with the American government. So I, I don't think that, uh, I, I don't know who's going to do anything about this. I don't see anybody standing up to do anything about it. That's the sad part about it. Uh, let's go to uh, Mike in Canada. Mike? Hi, David. Yes. Hi, David. Sorry. just want to say, first off, uh, those two years that you've done, uh, you fit in really well. And I have to say, when I first started listening to you, you sound way more comfortable and it, it's really nice to hear your voice, actually. Well, thank you. Actually, when I came here, I was more experienced behind the camera than I was in front of it. So it's taken a while. But I was always politically active and I always worked with, you know, politics. So, but, uh, yes, yeah, so you had a question. I, I got a quick question, a very quick okay. comment. So the quick question is this. is I read a uh, testimony released about Steve Pachenik in Italy. Uh, and within that document, uh, the prosecutor asked uh, Pachenik about the interviews and TV shows that he does. His response in this uh, article was that when he goes on TV shows and interviews, it's fiction, and that it's a part of a misinformation. Hmm. Now, this is an Italian. Uh, the website is actually called um, Corriere della Sera, which I guess is Courier in the Evening. Uh, the comment that I'll make, and then I'll, I'll kind of listen to you off the air, uh, the comment I wanted to make was this, is the best radio uh, for InfoWars is when you're being challenged. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Uber, Pierce Morgan. Those are some of the best interviews I've seen Alex do. Yes. Now, all I'll, I'll say to you is, it, it's nice, it, it is nice to preach the choir, but we already know the tune. We need to find the people that don't know the tune, and the only way to do that is by bringing in their masters. Yes, that's true. Well, as far as Steve Pachenik, as to whether or not uh, what he's saying is true, it's always difficult. It's always difficult, especially when you're talking about intelligence matters, to determine whether somebody is telling you a piece of fiction or whether it's the truth. I will say this, that he did come out and say very early on that what was going on in Benghazi was essentially internecine fighting within the CIA, that they were shipping these weapons to uh, terrorists that has now that, that were going to be used in Syria and elsewhere. And that eventually did come out. So I, I think, you know, he has given us some good intel. We need to always vet everyone's sources. I just want to let you know this hour has been brought to you by My Patriot Supply. MyPatriotSupply.com is the home of the Patriot Pantry line of emergency food storage. Patriot Pantry is delicious, nutritious, and prepares in minutes. It offers amazing variety, great taste, and is packaged to last up to 25 years. The products you need, the service you expect, the price you can afford, visit MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today or call 866 229 0927. That's mypatriotsupply.com forward slash Alex or 866-229-0927. Let's go back to your calls. Uh, Craig in Wisconsin. Go ahead, Craig. Yes, uh, it's, uh, the power elites um, are causing many of the uh, crimes today with the Cloward and Piven, uh, nuclear madness, uh, the balkanization, the divide and conquer. So uh, just like with the uh, minority report uh, pre-crime, uh, you know, we all still have a choice, even up to that uh, moment that the power elite are forcing uh, all of Earth humanity into these, uh, you know, terrible, you know, worse and worse choices. You look at what's happening in Ukraine. You look oh, yeah. at what's happening in Israel and Gaza. 
And I guess one of the things that bothers me so much about it is the pervasive snitch society that they're trying to force on people. And this is a story that we had up on uh, Drudge Report today from uh, Paul Joseph Watson on InfoWars about the feds urging paramedics and firefighters to help them to turn in extremists. So they say, if, if, you know, I want you to vet these people, and if you think that they've got an injury that might be due to suspicious activity, I want you to uh, turn them into Homeland Security. That's the kind of East German surveillance snitch state that they're trying to build. You're talking about turning people against each other. I mean, it's not just pitting ethnic groups against each other. It's pitting each and every one of us against the other person, trying to make us afraid of each other. Go ahead. And that's why the info war is is so important to uh, use the information that we have because the truth is on our side, and uh, it's going to be just a small group of people uh, who are able to uh, stand up to these uh, power elite, just like the tank man. Yes, in that's true. That's true. In China. And just like the people, I, I got to say, that was one of the most amazing experiences that I've had, certainly in the political arena, being at the Bundy Ranch and basically seeing these honest, decent people who have just had enough of having sniper rifles pointed at them for over a week, having uh, an agent come up and grab from behind a lady and throw her to the ground, having dogs stuck on them, being tasered. They said, we've had enough of that, and we've had enough of you doing that to our neighbors. And they just passively showed up, and even though they were threatening to shoot them, they just said, you're going to have to shoot us off the horses. We're not going to put up with it anymore. That was an amazing experience. I, I'll, I'll never forget that. Thank you, uh, Craig in Wisconsin. Let's go to uh, Sean in Pennsylvania. I want to try to get as many people in as we can. Go ahead, Sean. Hey, how you doing? Doing good. Yeah, go ahead. I think you're doing a great job, David. Thank um, you. I, I had one comment about the, uh, the border crisis. Um, first of all, I think it's crazy how they're able to, you know, spin the situation into something that isn't you know, more of a, or it's more of a humanitarian thing. Meanwhile, without borders, you don't have a country. We were just talking to Sean in Pennsylvania. Go ahead, Sean. I want to get back to you and let you finish your point. All right, David. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I just wanted to make the point that, I mean, it's my personal opinion that I think the, um, the border crisis, first of all, was definitely created. I mean, yes. it, was, it was made to be this intense. It was incentivized, um, situation yes. All, all at once, you know, part of Cloward Piven. Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But um, my point was that I believe that it is the implementation of the North American Union that was signed under uh, Bush, I believe. So oh, yes. I just want to... They made it quite clear. We... Yeah, they, we played that clip. You know, Pelosi, one of the things she said when she went down there for a press conference is we happen to have uh, two people just, and there's just a, a border that runs through it. It's nothing really. And of course, uh, Petraeus is saying, you know, what comes after America? Well, that's simple. North America, they see this as a an accomplished fact. Uh, they see it as a law that was passed 20 years ago. And, and even Petraeus said that when he mentioned that. He said, you know, we passed this 20 years ago. Now they are making it an accomplished fact. You know, we just had this story up on InfoWars. Obama calls for a collectivized new world order. This is from Paul Joseph Watson. Listen to this quote from Obama. He said, part of people's concern is just the sense that around the world, the old order isn't holding. We're not quite yet to where we need to be in terms of a new order that's based on a different set of principles. Well, actually, it's a quite old set of principles. You know, there's always been this tension between uh, dictatorships and liberty, individual liberty, and of course, it is now turning to a different set of principles here in America, a set of principles that is abandoning the rule of law and abandoning individual liberty. Let's go to Paul in New Jersey. Paul. Good afternoon, David. I'll go quickly. you you got to realize we've been under communism since night. 1913. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, we got communism on the bottom and we got fascism on the top, don't we? We got a, a multi level strategy there. The income tax, it's a complete fraud. It's unlawful and you're entrapped by the uh, univer Universal Commercial Code. Yes, I agree. All, all I agree. taxing and financial uh, 
transactions are under the Universal Commercial Code, and you do not have to pay that tax if you use it right. I you agree. Know? We all have to. We all have to pick our fights. I mean, I still, I you know, I pay my income tax because we have to to pick where we're going to fight them and how we're going to fight them. And of course, there's been a lot of people that have pushed on that. And again, going back to what we were saying before, I think your best chance of getting that overturned is going to be fully informed juries. I don't think you're going to see any politicians go near that. Of course, we do have some saying that the income tax needs to be abolished, uh, you know, assuming that it was there legally in the first place. That's something we've not heard before. We heard Ted Cruz say that. That was something used to be only the libertarian candidates would say, and we would get harassed for saying that. Let's go to uh, Tom in Maryland. Trying to run through these quickly. Thank you, Paul, for calling. Tom in Maryland. Go ahead. I'll talk quickly, Mr. Knight. Thank you for taking my call in overdrive. I appreciate you taking that extra time. It's probably why you've got me hooked on the evening news. Uh, <laughs> you and your colleagues uh, are constantly professional. You push the envelope, and you just don't see that with other newscasts. Well, thank you That's for supporting us. Make... I couldn't do it without you. Go a ahead. Absolutely. You Listen, you put out a product that you don't find elsewhere. Well, thank now, you. earlier you had a caller. Uh, who spoke about uh, individuals filing lawsuits. Now, you correctly noted that one of the tricks used by the courts to suppress and oppress individuals was to simply tell them that they don't have standing. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I strongly disagree with that. However, oh, yeah. um, I do have to um, respectfully disagree with you relative to your thoughts on not utilizing the courts as a primary place to try to preserve our freedoms. Oh, no, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't want to give that impression. I think it's very important to fight them everywhere. And I think you can have legal victories. I, I was very happy to see, for instance, Hobby Lobby take it all the way to the Supreme Court and win. They had everything on the line. You are watching the best of The Alex Jones Show, weekdays from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Watch live at InfoWars.com forward slash show or become a member of InfoWarsNews.com and help us take resistance to the next level.